Okay, hello friends of the <laughs> welcome to my channel and also welcome to another live stream, another Royal Retinue review. And first let me start by saying that I'm quite sick and I just literally just got my voice back. So I don't know how much this will last. So let's hope that for the rest of the stream, uh, I will try not to make this too uncomfortable if I have to cough or something. I will try to mute, that's why it was muted. I have a mute um, short key and it was, I was just testing it. Okay. See, uh, um, and if you don't know what this is, sorry, my head is a little bit uh, fussy. So uh, if you don't know what this is, this is the time of the month where I take uh, a couple hours to uh, go through my patrons and channel members submissions and I give them a little bit of feedback. Simple as that. So if you want to take part in the Royal Retinue Review, what the only thing you have to do is uh, become a patron or channel member on the tiers many times or above. And once a month, you will be able to submit one miniature or one unit or one of whatever you want for a uh, review. And I will do it here live uh, for everyone to see. Um, this is meant to be March uh, review, but sadly during March, uh, during the week that I was supposed to do it on, on March, I just got extremely sick. I couldn't even, uh, I, I almost couldn't walk and it was pretty awful. So I had to postpone it to this week. So in April we'll have two, one at the end and this one at the very beginning. So why don't we, um, oh, oh, before that, I always like to um, give a little, um, hint of what's coming so the couple next videos are uh, one it's it's this uh, sorry you can't really see it um you know ndas and all that stuff but it's 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 in space marine and it looks like it wants to be really really golden so this one's coming very soon and um, also I have my, my Rogaldon tank almost finished. And once I have all the chipping done, which is the only thing left to do, I will record a video on how to paint tank tracks in a very, very easy way with, again, three steps is one of those serious skill um, trickery things. It's going to be pretty awesome. And I also have another video that I already have recorded, but I, I'm not sure when I will edit it, but it's, it's about, um, I think you can see the product down there. It's down there is the, about the, uh, old Citadel artificial tint set, which I actually really like. Um, <clears throat> but that is coming soon. And for today it's just the review. Let me see which, uh, how many people we have here. We have Tim, Dan J, MBP, and Paul in the chat. Hello. Thank you for coming. Let's move into the... Okay, so why don't we start with Paul? Oh, Savik also just joined. Hello, Savik. How are you? Uh, Paul just... Uh, and this is Paul's entry. This is Paul's submission. And it's El Fit Campeador. Uh, and I think this was painted for a uh, article on a, on a magazine. Could be. Well, Paul is here to to tell. I think it was War Games Illustrated. Uh, my memory is not very good. Okay, sorry about that. I, it was all dusty. I don't use this thing apart from my <laughs> the, the the drawing tablet just for the reviews, and it gets super dusty. Um, from one month of just laying around. Okay, so we have a really lovely, yes, War Games Illustrated. So expect the, if you are a War Games Illustrated um, reader, spoiler alert, uh, you will see this <laughs> soon, I guess. Uh, and he wants a little bit of feedback on this lovely Elfit miniature. Um, things I really like are the face. That's pretty good. The horsey is looking is looking good. I think we will. I will talk about the horse later, because I want to. I want to give a little bit um, of feedback on a couple of things. 
first of all is okay let me just grab a brush okay again sorry if i seem a little bit not well that's just because i am not well <laughs> okay does this seem good a little bit bigger there's a big this is a big picture okay so first thing i would do is add a little bit of shading onto the shield it's just flat it's just like a big flat uh bone color so i think shading towards the bottom of the shield just a little bit you don't need much just like that just just adds that very very nice touch there oh we have another one joining the chat aaron jung hello aaron how are you and you can even take a little bit of this white and just just apply it towards the top you know a little bit of a differential um, highlight just like that you can already that makes a big difference because in this historical minis the shields are actually quite a big deal uh, they do make for a lot of space out of visual space so adding adding some differential uh, highlights and shadows i think does help quite a, quite a lot uh, i do like that you use a lot of different types of white one for the banner one for the shield one for the cape and that is a good touch one for the horse that's always nice uh, more things more things <clears throat> oh yeah I, I know what i want to talk about okay so uh another thing that i i think that the cloth is not highlighted oh, more opacity oh, i wasn't going to die here trying i'm sorry there's a little bit of music it for some fucking reason there's people listening to music on the on the streets spain okay so i think we should you you need to start to work on your cenifal um, clothing highlights because if you like to paint historical minis the you need to to be more conscious about the about the cenifal thing So all of your main highlights should be on the very top of the folds. Um, let me draw something for you and see if I can if I can explain it. So you have a fold that is like this and comes like this. Your your shadow should be at the very bottom of each fold. Just like this and your highlight should be at the very very top just like that so just right across where the deepest shadow is you should have the brightest highlight one next to the other that's what makes a good uh, cloth good good cloth rendering then we can get into all the details that may not be so um, crucial in this scale because I know these minis are tiny. So what you are actually doing, you are highlighting your your cloth like it was like uh, separate islands. So you will you are putting your your main highlight here and here, and then you have shadows. Uh, oh. on cooperate with me so you are doing basically this and this is um this is not the way to highlight cloth you want okay let me just go back to what i what i did before i i messed everything up <clears throat> there you go so you want something that looks 
more like this, where your deepest shadow and your brightest highlight are just right next to each other. Uh, this is something that um, you need to get your head around it. But if you if you go on Google for a lot of um, historical miniatures uh, in 75 or 120 millimeters or even uh, 54, you will see those patterns of highlights on the cloth. And that is uh, what makes cloth look more realistic. <clears throat> then for the horsey, I think so in some parts I'm 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 quite happy with the shading and in other parts I think the shading just went a bit too deep and I really like the neck area and I think here we are suffering for a bit uh, of too deeper of too deep uh, too much uh, shading uh, shading just went too strong maybe because the it was sculpted that way so um making it softer making all of those shadows a little bit softer will make for a uh, nicer looking horsey also i think uh, you mm, i think you have the enough skill if you have um, the the will to do it of just trying to do one horse with some fur texture a little bit of fur texture. I'm not. I'm not the best at this, so I, my fur texture is not going to look particularly good. But <laughs> there you go. so, if you you can do this after this stage, you can just go with some of the different highlight colors and just do these lines, following where the fur, um, how. Uh, following in the way that the fur would flow on a real horse and trying to do this kind of thing. I think for you that you don't, that you like to paint so many historical things, this can be something that you that you can that you can try. Um, it it can be done in this scale. I don't know how much skill it would require to do it, I guess in a lot, but I've I've seen it done in this scale I, I immediately by some of the best painters in the world, so whatever. But you will need to research um, horses and see how the hair flows in different bits because it changes orientation, and that's important. But that's another thing you can you can you can try. You know, just always looking for the next step. And the only extra thing I would change, I think, is. It's hard to tell if this is NMM or if it's metallic on the... I think it's metallic paint. I think I, I would want a little bit more highlights on the helmet. So with a brighter silver. It's real metal. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, Paul just said in the chat, a little bit like Andy Waddle's Eldron. Yeah, I was actually thinking about <laughs> Andy Waddle's Eldron. <laughs> When I was when I was talking about that, yeah, just just a little bit of that. It n not to that level, but a little bit of texture on the fur would really make the horse look much more realistic. And if this is the the main view that you want to display your your seat from, which I think it is, I would add some highlights to the to the helmet just there, just on that side. Uh, whatever view you want this to be photographed, which I guess is this, so you can see like the free hand on the on the shield, on the free hand on the banner. Uh, I would add a, like a nice reflection on the helmet there, just to make everything look uh, <clears throat> better. And yeah, that's that's essentially it. Um, researching cloth in historical miniatures. So you just go for the 40, for the uh, 54 and 75s um and just look for historical i think i think you you bought the book by um Kirill Kanaev. i think it's our everything should be explained there but i kind of remember that you told me that you bought that book so um everything is explained there you but cloth rendering is not easy and Indeed, go look at, at the different cloth sections and 
uh, not mm, uh, so much at his um, explanation because he, he he goes more into the texture side of things more than the how to render the highlights but look at the at the finished pictures and you and you're going to see those um, uh, patterns of highlights and shadows and that's what you need to look for uh, but this is different between what you did and my suggestions and small changes but I think something to to uh, strive for especially on the on the horse that is a difficult thing to do but i think you could i think you could do it i've seen your your harlequins okay let's move into carlos carlos has submitted uh fun fact uh, this this video this um <coughs> uh, section of the of the channel oh Charlie is here. This is his mini. This section of my channel just uh, is just um, uh, this is the start of the third year. This two years old in March because the first one was March 2021. So it's two years old now, and Carlos has been here since the very beginning. If you go and watch the March 2021st episode of the Royal Routine Review, you will see one of Carlos Minis and how much he has improved. And he's meeting a, an elder, which already, like here, because, you know, elders are the best. And it's a really well-painted elder, another very extremely lovely face. He's been working on his face and on his um, flesh work lately and it really shows we i, I see a couple of issues uh, right away here for example you can see let me just circle out that i'm pretty sure he is already aware of this but we have here oops come on cooperate with me please we see here this uh, um, a splotch. I think it looks like a wash that was taken away from the surface. <clears throat> so those things need to need to you need to be careful first of all. And if you if once if you have already done it and there is no way to fix it, then you can hide it with some highlights, just like this. Because it's right in the fold of the of the banner, so you can add a highlight there, and it will just disappear, like it was never there, like that, more or less. Mm, I'm not going to touch on the skin of the hair because those are just awesome, but I will touch on the armor a little bit. <laughs> Marius Alexander Conan is here. Uh, everyone can speak here. Uh, this is an open court. Uh, there is um, my only. Yeah, I was. I was. I've been looking at this armor, uh, this orange armor, for a long time. He. He. Uh, uh, he and I. We've been talking about this in the uh, round table which is the 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 private part of my discord for for um feedback um and we've been talking about about this so i've given him my uh, my feedback and i've been thinking about this this orange armor for a while and it's i think i think then the the next step would be too because it's 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 already quite clean the the edge highlights are quite decent but i think it just needs a little bit more of volumetric highlights i think i can see a lot of volumetric shading i can see very little volumetric highlights so let me make this a little bit bigger uh, and taking this highlight color here you can probably increase the volumes 
just by adding that orange, that very bright yellowy orange into some of the main volumes. You don't need to do this on everything, but just on some of them. Probably not on the shadow bits, but probably on the bits that are exposed to the sun, something like that. So we, so we have a little bit more uh, volume because there is a teeny tiny bit too much difference between the the edge highlights and the volumetric highlights. So something like this, and like this. I'm I'm less uh, certain about this bit. I'm not happy with that. Let me take those back. <clears throat> okay. Just like that. A little bit more. So. Uh, go in a little bit extra with the highlights, not necessarily the shadows, as I said. And always when you do that, you, you obviously need to be careful with your not losing your definition. So that's always important. So going back to define the panels well and, and all that, all that nice stuff. But that's the main thing is that I, Again, thinking about this for a long time, and I think it's like you know, it's a teeny tiny bit of volumetric uh, detail. <clears throat> uh, and I want to know what's there. I'm not sure if you forgot or if it just can't be seen from this angle, but even uh, whatever the case is, this volume here needs a highlight in this uh, view. Something there. The sword is really good. So that's great. And the leather is well the other thing that is a little bit a little bit not as good as the rest of the of the model. Um, and again, I think it would benefit from a little bit of a volumetric detail. So let's just do this. A little bit more of than what you've done, something like this. A little bit softer. <clears throat> Didn't see if we can see the changes. Subtle things, but really, I think worth try uh, trying to maybe not for this one if i don't know if you want to paint another one uh, i think it would be it would be cool the other detail that i just saw apart from a little bit of a messiness here with the blue um it's i would highlight the cape a little bit more uh. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, uh, Isoface Chamber says, I'm glad you're feeling better. Uh, not blue anymore. Yeah, uh, I just, I just got, I just got a little bit better with that. I was going to make a joke um, about uh, a speed paints, but I'm going to refrain because uh, I think we should put that a little bit behind at this point. So I would pick like. A, uh, leaning leaning a bit into the teals a little bit into the teals something like that and and I think I would I would want to highlight the cape a little bit more very softly just like that here I, I understand what you were trying to do, and I know that sounds like shit, but you asked for my uh, feedback, so... <laughs> but I think... Like 
and don't forget uh, to highlight the the patterns on the middle so something like this not a lot uh, because i know you want like super deep blue but a little bit of that teal color of that uh, slightly turquoise blue will make it pop out quite a lot because it has a little bit of yellow in it so something like this just a little bit just a little bit just like that <clears throat> And that would be basically it. I mean, I'm really impressed with, I, I always say this, but the the amount of progress from from Charlie to the beginning, and each, each, each month he's always pushing himself into doing cool stuff like this, and, and more and more and more. And yeah, I think you should be happy and, and trying to work a little bit more volumetric, which I know you can. So thank you for your submissions. Oh, we have pointy paints. Uh, afternoon, our Lord, Kin Juan. Oh, and Charlie says about my feedback. Oh, good point. I was thinking I needed to push something more on the armor. And that was a gem I forgot to paint. <laughs> okay, that, that, that uh, black detail here. Okay, that uh, explains things. But really cool paint job, Carlos, and I think you did fantastic. Thank you for your submission. Let's move into our next one. This is a bust, a bust from Mark. I think it's Mark's first submission, and he's uh, starting to delve into the world of busts um, and doing quite well. Okay, well, I was going to do, oh yeah, yeah I know what I was going to do. So, <clears throat> My 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 main concern is oh sorry Okay we are back sorry about that I need to drink a little bit of water I hope the mute um shortcut worked well because uh, <sighs> don't want you to hear all that nastiness I see a lot of good things like a lot of texture on the cloths and on these um, padded armor like this interlaced armor and and there is a lot of that and that's great uh, the my main uh, um, concern would be how the uh, scales and how the flesh is being highlighted um we need to respect a lot of the uh, sorry about that let me just okay so i think the most important thing is trying to respect the zenithal highlights and here for example you can see we are moving from a from dark at the at the at the top or at the deepest, which is also coincidentally the the deepest, and we are highlighting towards the outer edges, so more in an island fashion, and we we just need to go the other way around. So, our main highlight should be okay. Let me do it. Just do it manually. The main highlight should be zenithally, like this. So, in all of these surfaces, where uh, you, we need to start highlighting from the top towards the bottom. And also, we need to think about the the whole of the volumes more than any other thing yeah oh frank m says whoa everyone is sick lately yeah Every, i mean like uh yeah <laughs> it's 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 a bit crazy but 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 yeah everyone is sick <clears throat> and again as i said thinking about the whole volume not just individual scales one of the um examples would be here we want this gradient to go all the way and then 
we can just go down and redefine all of these scales and, and all the stuff. But if you if we do this, if we do all this defining after our gradients are done, we get a more realistic looking uh, bust. And again, the shadow should be at the bottom. We are going to respect that lip because I think it has a little bit of texture. And I hope you can see the difference that it makes. Look at that face. <clears throat> So again, thinking about the volumes in 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 terms of of then uh, as an absolute without any of the uh, texture of the skin, and then we can define all that lovely uh, scaly texture and add some definition to each scale and so on and so forth, creating that effect. Another detail, for example, would be here in these bones. Yes, those situations are nice, but these are tri um, three-dimensional bones, and we need to uh, do this volumetric uh, detailing on them, not just the estriations. I'm going to white here just to illustrate this, but you may not want to go up to pure white, but. You can see the difference between those bones. And and <clears throat> that's my main thing. I think the, the skin is where a lot of um, work can go. So we don't have the, the highlights going onto the lower parts, but also onto the higher. It's good to pick up the, the downward facing edges, especially in something like a dragon or dragonborn or whatever this is. But we also want to pick, um, to respect the volumetric um, shapes and all that stuff. <clears throat> Another detail I want to touch in is the gold. I'm going to go with, with pure white and I I think I want I want the gold to feel more shiny. How we do, how do we do that? Is with more extreme highlights. Just adding some extreme highlights onto this. I'm just using white, and, and you can see how much shine we get from that. We're going to add some like that. that like that it should have some white here like that and you can immediately I hope you can immediately see how much sh uh, metallic that looks like that so you are on the right track because all of the highlights are in the right places, but I think you need to be more dramatic with them. Don't be afraid of just going to pure white and just and just going nuts. And if you do it in all of the details, because all of the metallic bits should be producing the same, uh, respecting like uh, the same direction I think we can end up with a really nice um, NMN effect just just uh, going on um, on top of what you've already done another detail here uh, I think this needs to go to pure black Let me just there is still a little bit more to go and then um, let me smaller and harder. I'm going to try and do it some a little bit more sketchy. There we go. I think you can you can follow the edges of this gem with this light purple a little bit more. 
and you can blend these reflections with a little bit of that light purple as well. Something like that, probably. <coughs> Not sure, but but yeah, I think it needs a little bit more. Um, let me just separate this. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. I'm 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 way more happier. So instead of this um like just pure dot of white, what you should do is have a little bit of the lighter purple around it. Just a little bit like this. You need this super bright pure white, of course, in the center, but it shouldn't be like just the white. Just like that. Look at that. <clears throat> look at the difference between this and that so a little bit more uh, softness in some of these um, shapes and a little bit more subtleness maybe playing with the shape a little bit and all that stuff so I think what I would do probably I think it's the thing that is needed the most is adding that final punch of contrast to the uh, non-metallic gold. I think that is step number one. Going from this a little bit yellow um, um, paint job to like punch it into metal territory, which you just need to go to pure white and a, a quite strong transitions from the pure white onto the um, ochre beneath it. <clears throat> then you can play a little, uh, a little bit with this, with these gem reflections, adding a little bit more um, life, so they are not just big round dots. You can add the shapes or you can or you can let me just showcase that you don't need this this tail if you just want the round dots you can do that look at that but you don't do just white dots at this scale that works for 28 millimeters but you need to move into softer transitions a little bit of softness not you don't need like super soft transition like it takes a long while it has to be very small very short but it has to be there your eyes have to see that the a little bit of that purple around it like that. and if you, when you see it at that uh, level it really shows <clears throat> okay Okay, we're back. Let's move into the fourth one. Oh. Sorry. So first of all, um, that sword is really nice. So that's uh, um, comment number one. We can see some nice transitions. I don't know if you went all the way, maybe you did, but My suggestion is always to do all of the edges, including on the darker parts. So like there and like there with the brightest silver. That's the only thing that would change on onto the sword, but it's really well done. You got a really nice transition, and uh, it looks really good. It's it's clearly the center of attention of everything, and that's always nice.
Sorry about that. Thank you, uh, Isofist. Thank you. Um, new to this mute me uh, thing. I think I will put it in like mute while I while I while I am pressing, not just always mute. I think that would be <coughs> a better choice given how uh, absolutely awful I am with keeping that <laughs> that working. But it's still better than hearing me cough all the time, so that's nice. Apart from this, uh, we have what looks like a uh, contrast paint job of some kind. At least on the yellow, I can see some yand and yellow and the flesh and all that stuff. That is lovely and nice. I think the 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 next step to to take this is obviously adding highlights. Just a little bit of highlighting can go a long way. <clears throat> so you can take something like Kisla Flesh and just do a little bit of highlights on top of what the contrast has done. Focusing this always onto the upper surfaces. Just like that. In this kind of mini where the face is, um, where the arms are um, standing up and it's it's a really good opportunity to do some uh, directional light. I think it it will benefit quite a lot. Also, in these very old sculpts, you sometimes need to re redefine some bits because the the contrast or the washes are just not going to go where you want where you want them to go because <clears throat> these were sculpted by hand. Sometimes you just need to go. And redefine, for example, the the nose here, which is has a little bit of a, like a weird shape because again, this was sculpted by a human with putty and some tools, and sometimes, uh, you know, we are not perfect. Same for the yellow. I think the yellow can benefit from a highlight for something like phalanx yellow. You don't need to do many highlights here. Just. A little bit of highlighting and especially towards this side that is facing uh, front. You take here, for example, here, as I was talking to Paul at the beginning, respecting the the zenithal patterns. And that will, again, you can see here that hand sculpted, very small mini. You can use these highlights to redefine and soften some of those weird things. <clears throat> and let me grab a brown. Always be careful with the hair that was a little bit had a little bit of fleshy tones there. To take this kind of color and try to highlight the the hair again just around where the face is just there and there and maybe here at the very front near the crown that looks a little bit too fleshy let me just roll that back <laughs> it's hard to pick colors with this with this thing I think you're going to go a little bit blondie-ish for the highlights. Yeah, happier with that. That looks so much better. <clears throat> just a little bit, just like that. Again, you don't need to do much. I know it's difficult. Same for the leather. You can do just one highlight here in the front.
being leather you can add some texture if you feel like it and then we can take this green again a little bit extra with a lighter green and we just need to apply this near the face we don't actually need to highlight anything else and also uh, cleanup duties here for example where this um, chain mail is meeting the, the uh, face just picking up with a little bit of black so we have a nice definition <clears throat> so that would be essentially it i think this mini would benefit quite a lot with just one highlight across everything that's surrounding the face the rest is good you don't need to touch it but i think it would benefit just with uh, it will make it look cleaner it will make it look purposeful and then some some cleanup duties with some darker colors some dark browns and blacks to define everything so you don't have uh, color seeping from one area to the other uh, stuff like that that you can something miss like um like the recess with the with the contrast or whatever so all those kind of things uh, would be ideal but again lovely paint job nice sword like it thank you very much uh, peter that was a lovely submission let's move into team and team's been in the chat we have team in the chat and we're going to review one of his work in progress lovely looking uh, lovely looking the uh, rat thing abomination i think it's the name and uh, i see like a nice contrast layers with uh, quite a lot of uh, feathering and glazing of other colors as we can see some reds some purples and that and that's the good stuff what i want to see is uh, a little bit more of all of that <laughs> our youngest kevin yes yes fabulous biles lab rat yeah it's it's looking really good it's going to look awesome and what i want you to do or what i would do with this is taking all of these purples all of these uh, reds and just doing way more of that okay. and in broader areas oh sorry that was too much So I want this, for example, this purple around the stitches as well, just a little bit. Uh, we need to add a lot of interest to this skin. It, it, it is a lot of skin. And you have the this purple here, but I would add more uh, to a lot of places. To a lot of places. <clears throat> for example, uh, random patches and the crevices but also for example we can we can add it to the knuckles to make them make the hands look sick and disgusting and and why stop with uh, colors we have we can add some crimsons as you have already done So we can add some more cream, some goodness on the skin, more, more color. So you can basically not highlight this and just uh, use these colors to shade essentially and create all of this nice interest. <clears throat> and why stop with those kind of colors when we can go with uh, with a lot of interesting things like um, greens so we can we can add some greens here and there small patches we need to be careful with the with the green but we can add some greens like that very small small subtle details small hints of green here and there 
see how how much interest we are creating with all of those nice colors. You can see the difference between this and that. We are adding more and more and more and more and more. So we have done a little bit of green, so one don't do a little bit of blue as well. Maybe towards the feet here, a little bit of blues. You need to be with this uh, off colors, the the blues, the greens, you need to be careful, obviously, more than with the uh, reds and purples. And then we can, um, <clears throat> uh, we can paint this pustules with a yellow. I think that is the usual color for this kind of things. So again, this is just an idea, obviously. But I kind of like this kind of um, super nasty looking uh, thing having so many colors all across it. And if you do it well, it's going to look absolutely amazing. And you're going to do it well. Oh, don't forget, if you're going to add, you need to add some blood effects. So, coming from, from here, for example, some drips and stuff like that, you know, all these good things. And uh, yeah, it's going to be quite amazing. Oh, um, I think for these postures, I mean, this is so much fun. I think it's mandatory to put like a white disgusting dot in the middle and then taking some of this crimson. Oh, I need to make this softer. <clears throat> and just adding the red around it as well. But yeah, and then you can pick up all of the stitches with a bone color. Something like that. You know, you get the idea and it's going to be amazing. <clears throat> there you go and if you do the the matte thing or just even also picking up with this uh, highlight flesh the all the places where the stitches go into the skin that's just like chef's kiss I think in this case it's more important to highlight all of the stitching and all of the wounds than is probably highlighting the volumes of the flesh themselves. There you go. So something like this. I, I would just I would just go mad <laughs> doing it right now. So yeah, awesome. I would just in with this kind of super crazy piece i would just go mad with the skin and just add a ton of color into it and it's going to look awesome just be careful if you add greens and blues just be careful with those uh, you can go mad with the purples and with the crimsons but the greens and the blues need to be super subtle <clears throat> okay um that's basically it. Have fun. I'm I'm sure you are going to, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, everything with the NMM added because I can see this is all going to be metal. Uh, we are going to have some metal here at the back. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> really, really looking forward to that. Um, let's move into the last one, which is Pete. And Pete has another disgusting miniature. And this is this box walker. 
he gave me the the choice. I need a little bit of water, sorry. He gave me the the choice between two different Pox Walkers, and I chose this one. Uh, because I think it's lovely with the pink tentacles. I think that much pinkness really contrasts and goes fantastically well with this super dark grayish skin. It's like a nice pop of color. I think you should you should go for more of this pink in the rest of your <coughs> box walkers. Things to to make better. I think I think we need to add a little bit of exp of uh, what is usually called a specular highlights. <coughs> what are those? Well, those are the small reflections that make texture look wet, for example, or look um, shiny. <clears throat> a very good example would be here on this post on these pustules you can bring them up a little bit extra and then you can you can do oh this is too big but smaller you can make them look extra disgusting with a simple highlight on the bigger ones towards the bottom. So they look sort of like uh, super gross gems. <coughs> look at how disgusting those look now. Also, uh, the same applies for the tentacle and stuff like that. So how, how you do this is Okay, I don't want to take you too much outside of your comfort zone, but the the idea is to add a little bit like a like a highlight following the shape of the tentacle. Something like this. So they look wet. Which I think it's a great look for Nurgle. Because they need to look as disgusting as possible. And you should be able to do this with if you think down like something like a full and gray and just do like some brush strokes although <clears throat> i will admit that's not the easiest thing to do that's why i was um hesitant so take this as an option as something you can try uh maybe for a for a character maybe for um something like that so I don't want because I, I know this is an army and I don't want you to spend like 15 hours painting a a single pox walker because it's a bit ridiculous. Well, <clears throat> sorry. One thing I would add is some either blood on some um, Nurgle rod onto the <clears throat> entrails so you can take some good old Nurgle rod and just put it into the into the crevices of the of the entrails like that ah yeah like that who doesn't who doesn't love a little bit of Nurgle rod here and there and you can add it a little bit like it's dripping onto this symbol here and and then you can make like a small puddle onto the basin. It looks it just looks so good. 
same can be done, for example, into the inside of these like lab tubes, like mechanical tubes, and into the <clears throat> deepest crevices of the skin and stuff like that. Uh, but really, apart from all of this, this is a good box walker. It looks fantastic. My advice would be to take this uh, like super pink with the saturated skin and do it even if they don't have tentacles add it into other stuff like for example into a hand if they hand like or into the into the uh, yeah into the into the hands if they don't have tentacles or you know or into one of the legs just add those touches of pink onto all of them I would add some uh, Nurgle rod into the bellies and if you feel brave try these uh, specular highlights uh, because if you manage to pull it off it's going to look pretty awesome and that would be it essentially uh, it's a simple mini they are meant to be simple for an army but it looks super good and um, and I think it once the whole unit is finished it's going to look amazing Pete thank you for your submission and if you don't mind, guys, I really need to stop now. It's getting really hard to talk. <laughs> so, thank you very much for being here. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the chat while I'm uh, here. <clears throat> and um, again, I will see you at the end of the month. Hopefully not sick with another royal retinue review and if you want your minis to be uh, reviewed by me you just have to join my patreon or become a channel member at the um at the tiers of men at arms or above and i will see you here hopefully at the end of the month thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye